now it's Belvedere for me. Mm, yeah. And after that, <laughs> after that, we'll go into BTs and collect the new dodo rails. Yes, dear. Oh, and Toby asked, could you pop around and give Emma a hand with the cement mixer after lunch? Yes, dear. And um, then, oh yes, well, Toby would be there himself, but it is open day at the sauna. Yes, dear. And then I'd like you to ride around the Downs, stark naked on the back of his <laughs> head. Yes, dear. I knew it, Anthony. You haven't been listening again. Oh, no, 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 I have. Really, I have. Well. Uh, well, um, well. Um, well, you said that Toby had gone to the sauna stark naked on a zebra. <laughs> me. Really? What's wrong with you? You were just like this last night. Not a peep out of you. And it was a Friday night. Oh, I am sorry, darling. I shouldn't be letting you suffer for my mistake. Your mistake? Anthony, is there something I ought to know about? I suppose I should have told you about this last night. God knows I tried. I did try, but... I just couldn't bring myself to come clean. Anthony, what on earth is the matter? Pamela, darling, do you remember last month when I went on that little trip to Bulgaria with Miss Finnerty? Your secretary? Uh-huh. Yeah. What about it? Well, Miss Finnerty and I wined and dined the Bulgars and... Oh, God, I don't know how to tell you this, but... What? That we didn't get the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that all? Is that all? Pamela, I pulled out all the stuffs for those bulgars. I thought we had the contract in the bag and now it's gone. Oh, Anthony, for goodness sake, it's only one little contract. Oh, you but don't understand, more. darling. I used to be called the Fox of Socks. <laughs> but now there's a whole new generation of sock salesmen out there, younger, tougher, hungrier. Oh, Anthony. Let's face it, Pamela. As far as socks are concerned, I'm yesterday's man. I'm over the hill. And don't forget to bring your shin guards. Eddie, that's the orange segment for the half-type. Now make sure the twins don't try to sell it to the young lads. <laughs> and that's some soup for you to keep you warm at the sidelines. Oh, thanks, love. What is the young good for this morning? It's the first Saturday I've had off since I bought that boutique. I feel like a kid, Mitchell, from school. I have the whole day ahead of me to do as I please. What do you mean you're going to let the Loras run the place on her own? Yeah, she'll be grand. Yeah, but, I mean, she's only been working for you a week. She's a quick learner. Yeah, she's quick, are we? <laughs> it brings me back to the time when we were in the checkout together, do you remember? Just after leaving school. And that young fellow, the trainee manager, what was his name? Oh, Halloran. Yeah, he just left school himself. Oh, Halloran. Dolores ran rings around him. He didn't know where he was going. She had him distracted. <laughs> he ended up getting a sack, didn't he? I can't remember that. Mm. Oh, God, the laughs we had. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the Hallowith was great crack, too. <laughs> it's no way better to be off. Ah, come on, lads, time to go. I give Dolores a ring to see how she's getting on. Oh, there you are. Have you got the artist there? Yeah, here you are. We'll take good care of them there. Yeah, right, come on, we'll be late. See ya. We'll see ya. Mm. Bye. 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 Look. And don't forget to share those oranges. While Anthony is getting changed, I'd like a quick word. Strictly entre nous. Oh, good. A secret. Go ahead, I'm in all ears. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've noticed that Anthony just isn't himself this morning. Really? No, I hadn't noticed that. Uh, yes, well, to cut a long story short, the Bulgars have let him down rather badly. Oh, did they indeed? Yeah. <laughs> and the result of which, his confidence has taken a bit of a bashing. He feels it's the end of the road, so what he needs is something to... something to give him a bit of a boost, to lift his spirit... Say so... no more, Pam. I think what we're talking here is a rather bad, but not untypical case of... MMLC. MMLC? Yeah. Male midlife crisis. <laughs> I happened to read an article about it only last week in the hairdressers. Now, I can tell you, this requires very careful handling. Now, I don't wish to alarm you, Pam, but you could be sitting on, so to speak, a time bomb. He could go off any minute. <laughs> Toby, what are we going to now, do? Now, don't worry. Leave it all to me. Right. Darling, oh, we really need... Oh, 
Are you still here? <laughs> yes, I'm still here. Still here for you, Anthony. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Pamela, I wonder if you wouldn't mind fetching me another cup of coffee? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Darling, what about the dado rails? <laughs> and do we really have time for Toby to swig down all our coffee? Now, please, Anthony, sit down. What? And don't be worried about time. There's still enough sand left in your egg timer. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You know, Anthony, I envy you. I don't quite follow you, Toby, and I don't think that I want to. I envy the simple pleasures that await you at the even tide of your life. What even tide? Senior citizenship beckons. <laughs> now, for the rest of us, it's just the hurly burly, madcap, normal life. But for you, Anthony, there's an opportunity to wear your pajamas all day, every day. <laughs> Pajamas all day? You see, Anthony, becoming an old-timer isn't just about pureed food, incontinence and senile dementia. <laughs> oh, no, it's a lot more than that. It is? Oh, yes, Anthony. There's still a few years left on your shelf before you pass your cell by date. <laughs> Are you ready for that cup of coffee? I don't think that will be necessary, Pam. I feel my work here is done. <laughs> Besides, if I don't rush, I won't get a good seat at the sauna, and it's open day, it's always a bit of a tight squeeze. <laughs> so, Anthony, you're only as young as you feel. Now, I'll tell Emer to expect you at the cement mixer in about two. Okay? Bye-bye. <laughs> Ciao. Now, that dress doesn't do the trick, love. Tell your man he needs his eyes examined. Thanks very much. Bye. See ya. Bye. Oh, sorry, love. Sorry. Molly, what are you doing here? I thought you weren't coming in today. I thought you were. Sorry I'm late. The thing is, I have to get some food in for tonight. Shops will be all shut by the time I'm finished here. It's Saturday morning, Dolores. It's the busiest shopping day of the week. Don't I know? You'd want to see the queue in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. Look at that lovely pot roast. Dermot put it aside for me. Remember Dermot? Who? Dermot. Of course you remember him. When we were on the checkout, he was starting in fancy fillings. Dermot. Oh, you do remember. Skinny, like a bean pole. Very bad stutter. Not the young fellow who used to slip you the odd pot of jam. The very same. Only he's slipping me more than jam nowadays. <laughs> what? Pot roast, leg of lamb, you name it. Here. Do you remember the time the three of us were down the basement? Oh, God, at the Christmas party. Yeah, and that young trainee manager, what was his name now? O'Halloran. Young O'Halloran came looking for us. Yeah, and you went into the meat storage, and he went in after you, and you slipped back out again. I locked him in the deep breeze. He was in there for a whole hour. God, I'll never forget the look on his face when they finally defrosted him. Neither can I. <laughs> oh, the last we had then, Molly. I'll put the kettle on. It's the competition, you see, the relentless competition. Every year, some new young Turk comes along full of energy, full of ideas. Oh, and to throw a muscle in on your patch, huh? Oh, of course. And every year there's more of them to worry about. Janey, I never knew there was that many talks in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Look at Anto. <clears throat> what you need to do is show these young pups who's boss. <laughs> oh, that's easier said than done, Barlow. Oh, not at all, Anto. It's very straightforward. All you have to do is reason with these sort of guys. Reason? Yeah, well, first off, <clears throat> you invite them to an informal business conference in a quiet alley or a, an empty warehouse of your choice. <laughs> then you ask them if they intend being able to walk home from that meeting. At this point, I find most of my competitors do, in fact, see reason. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, yes, well, I think I'm getting a bit too old for this sort of thing. <laughs> That's what Toby O'Driscoll thinks, anyway. Uh, well, you know what they say, Anto, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Oh, you could open the window. <laughs> Easy, lads. Three points. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, you could turn the oven off. There you go. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Professor. Yeah? But, uh, might I have a word with you in private? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, in, in, in private. Oh, oh, yes, oh, if you feel that's necessary. Well, excuse me for a moment. Oh, fair, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> 
And you could always buy one of those big fans, bad like, you know, the ones that hangs from the ceilings and go around and around and around. I hope you won't take it amiss, Professor, but I uh, couldn't help overhearing what you were saying just now. Oh, no, I don't mind at all. Uh, what exactly was I saying? Yeah, all that malarkey about getting old. You know, I've been through all that myself. Have you indeed? Oh, yes, indeed, Professor. I came to a similar crossroad some years ago when I discovered that my lady wife, uh, Mrs. McGettigan, seemed to be spending unusually large sums of money on dairy produce. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't see quite what that has yeah, to do no, with No, 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 neither could I. Until I laid eyes on the new milkman. <laughs> Handsome young whippersnapper. And he turned her head with all his talk about gold tops and fancy low fat yogurt. So what did you do? So what could I do? I locked Mrs. McGettigan in the back room. <laughs> and then I addressed the conundrum that has perplexed mankind since the world was young. To wit, how do we turn back the earthen hands of time? And? And? Well, not to put a tooth in it, I discovered the secret of eternal youth. Did you? Indeed, Professor. And what's more, I'm prepared to share it with you. <laughs> so, after the football, I took to see our granny. Did you? Yeah. And then, of course, they had to go and see their Uncle Willie, because he promised to show them his Eric Cantona colouring book. Did he? Yeah. And uh, so I left him with Willie, and then I went up to see our man about it. Why am I telling you all about what I did? I should be asking the lady a leisure what she did on her day off. So. What? So what'd you do? Nothing. This and that. What, you loaf around the house, go to town? What? I don't know. I suppose we went into town. Where'd you go? Off oh, the love of God, Eddie, will you stop at the endless questions? What? Look! All right. OK. I admit it. I went to the boutique. Are you happy now? I thought Dolores yeah, was going Yeah, you to... thought Dolores was going to be there. Well, she was. Oh. She was a bit... delayed. When, when did you expect her to buy her pot roast? A what? <laughs> and before you ask, she had to leave early. I mean, did you ever try and get a bus at that hour of the night? And if she had to leave early, why wouldn't she ask me? I mean, I'm supposed to be her friend, am I? Molly, well, you are a friend. But, um... Well, right now, you're also her boss. And that's a hard balance tonight. Oh. And if she's supposed to be my friend, she wouldn't be giving me the runaround, would she? Well, she is your friend, but there's just a couple of things between the two of you that need sorting out. Oh. All this old talk about the laugh we had at the checkout. I'll tell you what, Eddie. What? For the first time, I'm beginning to realise that young fella, O'Hallon, had to put up with. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Willie Q, we may all have to grow old, but we don't all have to look it. Do you know I can turn back time? That's Tina Turner, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where? No, no. Listen, <laughs> women, of course, have always known about these matters, you know. Bit of powder here. Nip and tuck there, any old broiler can look like a spring chicken. <laughs> now, my lady wife, Mrs. McEttigan, of course, was a notable exception to this rule. No matter how much stuff she slapped on, she still looked bleeding horrible. <laughs> so, are you telling me that you know the secret of staying young? Haven't I been going on about it for the past half hour? Well, then, what is it then, Mick? Mind your own bleeding business. That's for me to know and you to find out. Ah, Professor, right, aren't you? Come on in. Thanks. Right, time up, time up. Closing time, I'm closing for the night. Come on, out. Don't make me get the stick to you. But it's only half nine, me. Yes, see your bleeding lip, Willie Kyo, your bar. Come on, everybody out of the bleeding bar. Come on, you two hoppers. Come on, drunk to us. Not you, Professor. No, we have some business to attend to. Well, 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 well maybe I should come back some other time. No, uh, now, you just sit down there now, and I'll get it. Ah. Uh, what have we here, Professor? <laughs> what have we here? I'm not really sure this is such a good idea. <laughs> oh, it's too late to draw back now. The die is cast. <laughs> and abracadabra. Oh, the magic was <laughs> You're a young man again. Do you really think so? Trust me, the years have fallen away. Um, 
It feels a bit itchy. Uh, well, that will be the fineness of the hair. Oh. You see, it comes from thoroughbred donkeys. <laughs> it smells a bit rancid. Yeah, well, that will be the donkeys again. They're filthy animals. <laughs> Oh, um, no, I, I don't think this really suits me. Yeah, no, say no more. No, try this one for size. <laughs> ah, no, this is very nice. Uh. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, you could break a few hearts with that one. Do you not think it looks a bit red? A bit of colour. Sure, isn't that what all the young ones go for nowadays? Ah, uh, no, I don't think this is me either. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, don't worry, Professor. I've plenty more where they came from. The night is young, and uh, so will you be when I've finished with you. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks, William. I'll see you again. OK, bye. Another satisfied customer, Molly? This place is going to be a right little gold mine for you if it keeps up. Early days yet, Dolores. Now, did I mention that I have to knock off early tonight? I let Dermot talk me into going out for a meal. You know that Chinese by the supermarket? I hear they've done it up lovely. So I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow morning, Dolores, at opening time. Well, now, I might be a bit late, because I told Bernie I'd drop in first thing, let her know how I got on with Dermot. You know, I think she's a soft spot for him herself. So I'll see you tomorrow. Dolores. What? What's in the bag? Oh, oh gee, I nearly forgot. You know that gold top I was trying on this afternoon? Well, I thought I'd test it out on Dermot tonight. What do you think? Will it drive him mad? I don't know about Dermot, but it's driving me mad. What do you mean? What do you take me for, Dolores? For the past week, you've been coming and going as you please. You spend more time trying on the clothes than you do with the customers. I'm not paying you to skive. I'm paying you to work. So that's the way the wind's blowing, is it? Yeah, that's the way the wind is blowing. Well, I don't know what has you so concerned about the money you're paying me. Before you won all your millions, you didn't care tuppence about money. You cared about your friends. What I cared about, Dolores, is me so-called friends giving me the runabout. Well, you've changed, Molly Q. Somebody's changed, Dolores, and it's not me. Well, you know what you can do with your bleeding job. And here, you can have this and all. It would be too good for the likes of me. <laughs> oh, tell me more. Well, when he came back from McGettigan's that evening, he was wearing a hat. <laughs> Unusual for Anthony, I admit, but in the greater scheme of things... No, 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 Toby, you see, you don't understand. He um, hasn't taken it off since. <laughs> you mean...? I mean, he has worn it at breakfast, at dinner, in the bath. In bed. Oh, I see. <laughs> what does it all mean, Toby? I'm afraid it's bad, Pam. Yes, we're back in MMLC country. <laughs> now, our first priority must be to get him to take off the hat. Right. Oh, here he is now. <clears throat> now, this is a sensitive matter. Leave everything to me. Right. Hello, darling. Oh, hello, Toby. So you're here again. Hello, Anthony. Please, sit down. Why, thank you, Toby. How kind of you to offer me a seat in my own house. <clears throat> what an attractive hat you're wearing, Anthony. Ooh, I'd love a hat like that. Give me that hat. Is anything the matter? Oh, nothing for you to worry about, Anthony. <laughs> then give me back my hat. No, Anthony, keep your hair on. <laughs> you know, you know, before you came in, Anthony, uh, Toby and I were just talking about hats. <laughs> How stylish they can be, weren't we, Toby? Yes, and what a great source of warmth they can be, especially if one is, shall we say, follically challenged. Follically <laughs> challenged. Baldos, Pam, Slapheads, the Chrome Dome Brigade. <laughs> of course, you wouldn't need to wear a hat for warmth, especially if you were already wearing a snug-fitting little balaclava. <laughs> what a lovely rug you have, Anthony. What? They're over there, I haven't noticed it before. Now listen here, Mr. Rubber Pants. <laughs> I may be what you like to term follically challenged, 
But at least I don't spend every Friday evening having my hair highlighted with a russet wash. It's not a russet wash, and it's just to bring out my natural colour. Your natural <laughs> colour, Toby, is mouse. And speaking of hair, is it absolutely necessary for you to have a full body wax before and after each sauna? That's for aerodynamic purposes. It helps me to ride faster when it's old. Oh, really? <laughs> well, let me invite you to put your theory to the test. I don't understand. On your bike, Toby, on your bike! <laughs> you did the right thing. No two ways about it, man. We're friends, Eddie. We have been since we were knee high. Uh, all the more reason for it to show you some respect. Have I changed, Eddie? Have I really changed? You can tell me the truth. The truth? Well, the truth is we've all changed. That's part of life. I mean, you're not the same girl working at Chagos with Dolores all them years ago. And neither is she. Trouble is, she doesn't know it. What do you mean? Look, Dolores may like to think she can go on through life carrying on like a, like a teenager. Well, I'm sorry for her, but she can't. We've all got to grow up sometime. Do you know what, Eddie Kyo? What? I'm glad I have someone I can rely on. Uh, come here. Mm. Mm. Whoops. Here comes trouble. That's all I need. I'd like a word with you, Molly Kill. Have your word. On your own. Eddie, would you mind giving us a minute together? No, Thanks very much. Not at all. How are you, John? So, what's this word you want with me? Sorry. Sorry. That's it. Well, what more do you want? Sorry that I was late. Sorry that I skived. Sorry that I took advantage of you. That just about covers it. And one more word. What? Thanks. What for? For being straight with me. For telling me what you taught me to me face. You were always like that, Molly. Even when we were on the checkout together. And you haven't changed. We were friends then. Are we still friends? Of course we're still friends. And one last thing. Dermot gave it to me earlier. But I think we'd both like you to have it. In memory of the old days. Your very own pot roast. <laughs> God! It's just what I always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've never seen Toby move so fast on that bike. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, maybe the waxing does work after all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, the way you stood up to him, it, uh, it reminded me of my old Antony. <laughs> <laughs> the one they used to call the fox of socks. <laughs> yes, well, I do feel quite reinvigorated, you know, ready to face the sock markets of the world, eh? <laughs> yes. but, um, but before you do face oh. them, um, could I do just one little thing? What? This. <laughs> but didn't that make me look younger? No, it made you look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> causes baldness in the first place. What? Virility. Oh. An excess of male hormones. Those clever little devils. <laughs> mm. Do you know, even as we speak, I can feel them running amok around my whole body. <laughs> but Anthony, it isn't a Friday night. I know, but try telling that to the hormones. <laughs> <laughs> It's Bonjour.